Hey guys, welcome to Ultimate Ninja's North Shore's first National Ninja League competition. Uh, we're gonna go over some quick COVID guidelines slash uh, competitor and spectator rules, and then we're gonna jump right into the obstacles. So, first of all, everybody entering the facility is going to need to wear a mask. Uh, competitors will need to wear a mask that goes around their ears so it stays tucked during their course run. No buffs will be allowed, no scarves, nothing like that. It needs to go around your ears to stay tight. If it falls down during your course run, after you finish the obstacle, pull it right back up and continue your course run. Now, each competitor is only allowed two spectators to come and watch. This is so that we can stay within our guidelines of 50 people. <clears throat> Chalk, we will be providing you with liquid chalk at the start if you would like. If you need chalk during the rest of your course run, that's going to be up to you and that'll be needed to be provided by a certified coach. So if you're going to be on the floor to either watch, record, or follow them with chalk or coach them, you will need to have a certified coaching uh, training lesson. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the obstacles. All right guys, so this is going to be the rules video for the 6 to 8 and 9 to 10 age group. You guys are going to have 4 minutes and 30 seconds to complete 13 obstacles. So we're going to get right into it and get started with obstacle 1, side steps. You guys are going to start on this black pad and make your way through the steps going side to side. You can use your hands, you can use your feet, it does not matter, you can step on top. Any of this is fair game, you're going to go all the way down up and over this step to finish on this BOSU ball here. Okay, you need to control this landing because this is the starting platform for obstacle two. Obstacle two is the cargo crawl. From the platform, you can touch the truss, that's totally fine. You're gonna use your hands and your feet to make your way all the way down the cargo net. You can grab the tops, the ropes, anything you need to get to this pad. Okay, this gray pad is going to be off limits. The carbonet is low, so make sure you keep your feet up. This is your finished platform. You may land on or past it. Okay, coming around to obstacle three. You can take any path you want to get to the starting platform. We're gonna start on the Bosu Bowl up here. Obstacle three is watch your toes. You're going to use the PVC and the rings to get to that finished platform. You can also use this rope to lean out and crawl, crawl across. You may not grab any of the supporting straps or carabiners. And you may not use the trussing. So no hands up here. Incidentals against the truss are fine, but that's gonna be a judge's call and you're gonna land on this next platform. You may not overshoot it or land off of it because this is the starting platform for the next obstacle. Hands and feet are allowed anywhere on that PVC, so that's all good. Okay, next up is just a balance obstacle, okay? You're gonna make your way from this starting platform to the other one over there using the black balance tanks and the brown beam in the middle. These blue tumble tracks on the side are out of bounds. You may not use them at any time. Using as many or as few as you'd like to land on or past this pad. Hands and feet are okay on that obstacle. Next up, you're gonna climb on top of this box here to start ring lache. You can grab onto the truss here to steady yourself, to reach out, that's totally fine, up here is okay. But you can use these rings to lache up to this bar, reaching out to the ring, to the rock wall, and this is a connected obstacle. Once you touch this volume here, ring lache is complete, but you're on to starting rock wall crawl, okay? So, after you're standing on top, using any of the holds to get there, you're not gonna fall, it's totally safe. You're gonna use the rings to traverse all the way across the rock wall. You may not at any point grab any of the top of the rock wall or the trussing to help make your way through. You're going to go all the way down. You can dismount at any point. We've got holds on this side of the wall to use the climb down and dismount onto this platform. Now I'm going to show you 
it wobbles. So when you land, make sure you absorb it, okay? Because it can tilt. It's velcroed down, but it can move. Okay? Next up, we're going to traveling balance. You have to go from this platform to this big parkour box. Again, you have to control this landing because if you land past, that's going to be a fail for traveling balance. Okay? You're going to jump out the traveling balance. Come on down. Again, hands of Peter, totally fine. You're going to use this beam and these three gumballs to get to your finished platform there. You'll carry them down. Put as many or as few as you need down to make your way to the platform. Okay. Up on here starts double doors. Okay? You're going to climb up from traveling balance. Make your way into the jumping spider. Keeping your hands and feet on the walls, you're going to go underneath of the door. These are stuck in place so they're not going to move. They're not going to fall down on you. Okay? You're going to go under the first one, under the second one, and use the two rings to get to that finished platform. You can land on or past this one, and that will clear double doors. Again, taking any crack to the trampoline. You're going to come up to Silent K Lane, okay? You're going to use any of these hanging objects here to get on or past this landing platform. These rings can come off, okay? Be aware of that in your course run. So again, landing on or past this black box clears Silent K Lane. Next up is the broken squirrel. You'll, you're going to start on the trampoline. Walking up on the pad too is fine. Once you start on the trampoline, you've started the obstacle. You're going to use the flying squirrels to get to the second set here. This is another combined obstacle, okay? To clear the broken squirrel, you have to make contact with the first shelf here. That gets you clear for the flying squirrel. If you fall here, you're failing the flying shelves. So, using the flying squirrels, you're gonna grab here. Once you touch it, again, that's a clear. You're going to use the T if you want, and this last shelf to get to this platform. Again, landing on a path. There is lips on only some of these. This second one has one lip. This first one has two lips. You can use any part of these shelves to make your way all the way through, okay? Once again, landing on or past is totally fine. We're going to make our way to obstacle 12. Final climb. You're going to climb up using the provided rock holds to your starting platform here. You're then going to make your way across the rock wall using the holds that are provided to the pegs here the ring and make your way all the way down to land on this landing platform. You can skip holds, use as many as you want. Hands and feet are okay on the bar on this obstacle, it's totally fine. And you'll clear once you land on the papilla. Then taking any route you would like over to the warped wall, watch your head on the salmon ladder over here. You guys just have to start in front of this gray pad and then you can run wherever you'd like. You do not have to stop on your initial attempt to the warp wall. If you miss your first attempt, you have to start before this gray pad. You guys are going to run up and over the 10 foot wall. You may not step here to help yourself up. You may not grab this one to help bring you up. You can only use the 10 foot wall to pull up, hit the stairs, and your time will stop. Once again, you guys have 4 minutes and 30 seconds to complete this course. Good luck, guys. And here's your full, full course run for the 6 to 8 and 9 to 10 age group uh, course.